Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to give you three Lightroom editing tips for beginners. So if you're new to Lightroom, this video is for you. And we're gonna jump right into it with tip number one. Tip number one has to do with vibrance and saturation. Uh, all too often, I see beginners a little confused about when to use vibrance, when to use saturation, and what is the difference between the two. Well, let's talk about saturation first. If I go to the saturation slider, which is at the very bottom of the basic tab, and I start moving that to the right, what it will do is it will increase the saturation of every single color in the image equally. Not only does it increase the saturation of every color equally, but if you have a color that is already saturated, it will oversaturate it. So you could say that saturation is kind of a heavy-handed slider. Conversely, if I start moving it to the left, it's going to decrease the saturation or desaturate every single color in the image equally. So much so that if I move it to minus 100, I'll have a black and white image. So again, saturation is more heavy handed. It affects every single color, every single pixel equally. If you move it to the right, it increases saturation. If you already have a color that is saturated, it will oversaturate it. On the other hand, vibrance is a little more light handed. It doesn't affect every color equally. And if you have a color that is at or near saturation, it will not oversaturate a color. So it brings the colors to saturation, but won't oversaturate the color. And what colors doesn't it affect as much as other colors? Skin tones. Look at the vibrant slider. Well, let's first, let me show you the saturation slider. If I start moving it to the right and look at her skin tones, if I start going over 30, you could see it's really adversely affecting her skin tone. We're at 45, it looks horrible. Now, the vibrant slider, on the other hand, if I start moving that to the right, you could see as I go up above 30, 35, it's not affecting her skin as much, but it is affecting her clothing, it's affecting the colors in the background, but not affecting her skin tone as much. So vibrance is a much better choice if you have a person in the shot. It's also a better choice if you have some colors in the shot that are already saturated or near saturation. Saturation, on the other hand, is a better slider to move. If you have, let's say, a landscape image that was a dreary day, the colors are a little subdued and you just want to give it a little pop, saturation works best for that because it will increase all the colors equally, uh, saturation of all the colors equally as you move it to the right, and it just does a good job. It's also a better choice if you want to desaturate an image for whatever reason. You're going for maybe a grunge look and you want the colors desaturated. Saturation is probably a better slider to move. So that's the difference between the two and when you want to use one over the other. Now tips number two and three are kind of intertwined. Tip number two has to do with noise reduction. Actually, let's move to a different image. My recommendation for noise reduction is that you do it very early in your workflow. I recommend that you do any profile adjustment first or pick your profile first. Do any white balance next. Then adjust highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. And if you have to adjust exposure, do that as well. But do not adjust anything else. So don't do any contrast, no texture clarity, dehaze, no vibrance, no saturation. At this point, jump down and do noise reduction. Noise reduction is in the detailed tab. And what you'll often find with many cameras, Lightroom will automatically add a default amount of sharpening and a default amount of noise reduction. What I recommend you do is take sharpening all the way down to zero. The reason why I want sharpening down to zero and some of these other sliders down to zero is because a lot of sliders in Lightroom sharpen the image. And when you sharpen an image, quite often you're enhancing the noise in the image. And then the noise could be a little more difficult to remove. Even though in Lightroom, the sharpening amount and luminance adjustments work together, but there's other sliders in Lightroom that enhance sharpening as well, even though they are not down here in this detail tab. Specifically, uh, clarity. Move clarity to the right. The image looks sharper, doesn't it? Well, when you move that to the right, if you have any noise in that image, it's going to enhance the noise as well. Texture makes the image look sharper, right? Yeah, well, it's going to enhance the noise too. So keep those at zero. Also, I consider dehaze and contrast uh, two sliders that actually 
make the image look a little sharper. Dehaze in a very gross way, meaning in large swaths of the image, it kind of just makes it look sharper. And so does contrast in a very larger way. I mean, whereas um, uh, texture will make finer detail look sharper, contrast won't make the finer detail look sharper, but it will make larger objects look sharper and more prominent in the shot. So that will also enhance noise. So don't do any contrast adjustment, texture clarity, dehaze. Uh, jump down to the detail tab. If you have a de default amount of sharpening added to the image, bring it down to zero. Zoom in and then remove the noise. Now I have a video where I go into excruciating detail talking about what all the sliders in sharpening and noise reduction in Lightroom do. If you're watching this video on YouTube, a little flag will pop up over here on the right hand side with a link to that video. I'll also have that video linked at the end of this video and I'll have a link to it in the description below the video. I strongly recommend you check it out because there I will teach you how to properly reduce noise and to properly sharpen your image. I'm not going to go into detail now. Just tip number two, do noise reduction early in your workflow where I mentioned after you do highlight shadows, whites, blacks, um, white balance, and profile. Recommend it strongly. Zoom in on the image when you do it. Tip number three, how to really sharpen an image. Well, again, in that other video, which I have linked all over the place, I'll talk about, uh, I do talk about how to properly sharpen an image, but specifically for tip number three, I'd like you to consider have a sharpening regimen. Something that you do in a specific order in every image you do. Now I already mentioned that I consider dehaze, clarity, texture, and contrast to be sliders that sharpen the image as well as the detail amount slider. So what I do is I start out with the largest adjustment first down to the smallest. The smallest adjustment will sharpen the finest detail. The largest adjustment just sharpens big objects, makes them more prominent in the image. So what I do is after I do noise reduction, I go to dehaze first if my image needs it. Now, not every image needs it and this image doesn't. But if an image needs, needs any dehazing, I would move this slider to the right. This is the point I would do it. After I do that, if needed, the next largest adjustment that affects the biggest things in the image is contrast. I do that next. Now, because in step two, we already reduce noise or in tip two, we already reduce noise. What you're doing now is you really have an image that is noise free. And as you're doing these adjustments, you could periodically zoom in and make sure that you're not enhancing the noise. Too often, I found people just come in and start moving texture, clarity, dehaze, contrast all over the place. Then towards the end, they jump down to detail, they add some sharpening, and then they go to the noise reduction slider and they've enhanced the noise so much with those other sliders that they have to take this luminance slider and move it way to the right. And it's kind of defeating the purpose because what this actually does is smooth everything out and you're losing some of the, all that detail you just added to the image. So that's why tip two is do noise reduction early. Then later on, do this regimen of sharpening. Again, dehaze first, if needed, contrast second, clarity third, texture fourth. Now we're moving to finer and finer detail sharpening when we do it this way. And then finally, the finest detail, you jump down to the detail tab and move the sharpening slider itself. So again, I hope that made sense. Um, so there's your three tips. Tip number one is I've explained the difference between vibrance and saturation, when to use one or the, over the other. Tip number two, do noise reduction very early in your workflow. And I even talked about specifically when you should do it. And tip number three, sharpening and to, be, to develop a sharpening regimen. And I showed you mine. I start out with dehaze, then I move to contrast. Then I move to clarity, then I move to texture, then I actually go to the detail tab and move the amount slider to sharpen the image. Thank you everyone who watches my videos, I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.